technology has advanced to the point where companies that are fully embracing things like cloud technology, like uh, artificial intelligence, like uh, autonomous vehicles, things like that, are becoming crucial to business success going forward. Well, hello and welcome to the SkillWork Forum. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name's Tim. I'm usually joined by my partner, Brett, from SkillWork, but today we're doing something a little unique. For the first time ever on the SkillWork Forum, we have a guest here. We have a uh, honored guest. It's a, a great partner of ours at SkillWork. I can introduce Austin Duncan from our IT, or technology partner, Aegis. Austin, uh, welcome to the SkillWork Forum. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and talk about uh, what, what's Aegis all about? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm honored to be the first guest on the podcast. Um, so, like you said, my name's Austin. I work at Aegis Technologies here in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, we specialize in supporting the IT for small to medium sized businesses. Um, my role at that company is a technical account manager. So it's a good balance of technology and account management, exactly like the title says. Yeah, so I think, you know, in that role, you've really helped us try to understand how we can leverage technology to improve our business functions, our processes, what we do. And that kind of, you know, fits in well with some of the things we've been talking about is how do you leverage technology in some of these industries that maybe traditionally you don't think about technology right out, out of the bat. And I know that you guys, particularly Aegis, really focus on a lot of your clients and folks you work with, particularly in the construction space. Yes. It's a big part of what you do. And as a matter of fact, we'll talk about it a little later on the podcast to get that information to you. But I know you guys have been hosting and and um, putting together, bringing together construction folks annually to talk about technology. And you, what's, what's your uh, conference called? So our conference is called uh, Construction in the Cloud, which this is our third one, like Tim said, uh, it is awesome. The first one was in person. Last year was obviously virtual. This year we're going for a little bit of a combo of the two. So it'll be some in person and some virtual. Um, but it is just a really cool conference that uh, brings vendors and uh, construction companies together uh, to be able to just kind of share ideas and learn about new technologies. And it's it's really just an awesome conference. We have a blast doing it. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, so construction in the cloud, obviously we're not talking about building things up in the air. Yeah. It's cloud, it's the cloud technology, it's the internet, and that's something that kind of gets back to what we've been talking about here. Uh, this um, idea that we think we're actually fully into now, we meaning all of us that work in the, the skilled trades industry, something called the fourth industrial revolution where technology has advanced to the point where companies that are fully embracing things like cloud technology, um, like uh, artificial intelligence, like uh, autonomous vehicles, things like that are becoming crucial to business success going forward. So we've talked about that in previous podcasts and I just thought Austin, as somebody representing a technology focused company that you might be able to talk about, what are some of the things you're seeing, some of the kind of intriguing technologies specific to maybe the construction and or manufacturing space that, that you could provide some insight on? Yeah, so definitely the main one that we deal with a lot of is the ERPs. Uh, the ERPs are Enterprise Resource Management, um, I'm sorry, Enterprise Resource Planning uh, programs. And what those are used for is just managing construction projects from start to finish. And the reason why these have advanced to the point where they're so important and so cool as far as technology goes is because they have you know you have these construction companies that have field workers and when you're out in the field um, in the past it was hard to get that real-time data right from the from the sites back to the office so that the project managers and the uh, office workers accounting whatever it may be have access to that data from the employee clock in to um, the actual progress of the construction project, all of that. So those ERPs are extremely important and we deal with those on a day-to-day -day basis and they're just getting more and more advanced as the day goes by. So um, it's kind of pulling together all the information in kind of an ecosystem, a technological ecosystem that everybody is interconnected and done in real time. 
where it, traditionally things were kind of done maybe on paper, you scratch some notes, you put it in a laptop, you come back, you upload things at the end of the day. So this kind of gets in that concept of like an internet internet of things. Very sort of much concept. so. Yeah. yeah. Very so, much so. So that's, uh, that's something in construction you guys are, are seeing a lot. You talked about ERPs, inner source resource planning and manufacturing has something similar as well where they they have similar kind of concepts yeah so they just call it i mean as simple as it can be an mrp instead so just a manufacturing resource um and that again all moving to the cloud so you're getting that that real data the data is, is accessible anywhere yeah um and it's it's just really beneficial uh for companies in both industries construction and manufacturing so in terms of uh Folks that use skilled craftsmen, skilled tradesmen, they're out there. Traditionally, you don't think of these guys being, um, you know, uh, embracing technology or maybe as as comfortable with technology. So how do you overcome that when you got guys that are, you know, blue collar or project management to work their way up? All of a sudden you're saying, okay, here's an edge device you have to use and you have to connect to the cloud. And are you finding user acceptance being a, you know, is that a hard thing to overcome or to, no, I don't think so. User acceptance, and that's a, you know that's the thing about technology and the way it's going and how it's shaping and changing these industries is is that you're seeing it is it's almost a requirement for somebody moving into those leadership roles in, in construction companies to have that firm grasp on technology. Now, that's not saying that they need to know how to take apart their computer and put it back together, you know. But these guys. Um, know the ins and outs of these ERPs, any program that they're using, you're starting to see these leaders of these companies that are extremely knowledgeable about these things. And it, you know that alone gives them you know, a, a big advantage over their competition. So I think in our conversation, you said basically something along the lines of not being a tech guy or not embracing tech is just not acceptable it's it's just a non-starter in the world we're living in now Definitely. so i just this morning early i was having a meeting with with some guys and one of the guys said um you know he was an old dog and he had retired out of an industry and he said he said i just not i'm i wasn't gonna play with all that technology stuff and i mean he just kind of was at the end of his career and, and retired but there are probably those out there that are still kind of pushing back on technology what would you say to the to that yes so there definitely is a happy medium right sometimes uh you know the saying if it's not broke don't fix it is good right yeah um but you know to a certain extent this technology is is critical um it 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 allows your business to be more efficient um it makes for a safer work environment and depending on the technology it's just all around beneficial and if you don't use that just because you know you're not a tech guy you should know that there are people out there companies and individuals that can help you and make this transition to technology and help you use that to your advantage yeah it's really uh, i think how i see our partnership in that we really embrace technology here a lot you know and we have we are forward leaning with that respect. We do everything cloud-based. You guys have been our partner in that, and we recognize that we are experts in what we get from the systems, what we need them to do for us, but we do not pretend to be experts in you know, what, what goes on under the hood. Right. So we, we leverage the partnership we have with you. You're the experts, but you in turn understand our business. So there's a symbiotic relationship that may be necessary if you're struggling out there with this. Definitely, definitely. And that's, you know, again, one of the benefits of working with an MSP and um, that's pretty much, you know, my job is to get in, learn as much about your business, your business processes, what's efficient, what's inefficient. And then we just kind of put our heads together and and find some solutions. Yeah, so it's not just, uh, you know, kind of a, ubiquitous uh call the it guy if my computer doesn't work it's really understanding what you need to do to advance your business leverage technology and and something you and i talked about austin this idea of of that not every shiny object should you should pursue in technology like let's say you go to construction in the cloud you see three or four tools next thing you know like i want to get that one i want to get that one and you bring it in and and a, a term we talked about is technology trap 
So what, what does that mean? Yeah, so the tech trap. So basically just almost like you described it, right? It's, it's you see these shiny objects, the, the cool technology, and you just start trying to implement it all at once because it's cool and you know they tell you things like this will make you more efficient and this will you know they, they kind of sell that to you um, but what's important is that you sit down with the people in your organization your IT company and you go through kind of a plan you know you need to know okay why are we choosing this technology what are our goals you know what are we looking to improve with this technology and then you have to measure it from start to finish. I think that's the most important part is being able to see that that ROI um, really happen before you look to, look to the next shiny object. Yeah, I think that's key in that not every technology is beneficial for your company. And the other thing that I've experienced before and that we talk about here is this technology fatigue or change fatigue and that, you know, because you're pursuing the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the folks that you need to be able to leverage and use this technology, uh, it becomes overwhelming to learn new things constantly. So there's not only what you select, but it's the timing and phasing of what you bring in, right? To get yes. full advantage of it. Yes, exactly. So that, you know, that tech fatigue is, is real. You know, it is real. It, it's, you cannot overwhelm people. I mean, it even happens in our industry with us. Like sometimes we have to catch ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And even being an IT company, you know, we're like, okay. Wait a minute, you don't yeah. just like go to bed dreaming yeah. of IT and. Trust me, know. we do, we definitely do, but we do have to dial it back sometimes because that's important because if you overwhelm people with too much of that, then, you know, you're kind of erasing any efficiency that you would have gained even using that technology in the first place, which is exactly what you don't want to do and falls back into that tech trap. Yeah, and I think there's a generational thing too. Many of you out there that are, you know, been in skill trades for a long time, you may be a little older or you're leading a company and, you know, there's this resistance to change and you're comfortable in what you're doing. If it isn't broke, don't, don't fix it. And you recognize that your grandkids, I have grandkids that are eight, nine, 10, 11 years old that can go circles around me with technology. So there's a, there's the need to get yourself out of comfort zone and embrace some of these, but also recognize that I can I can bring people in to augment my lack of understanding, but you know don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Make sure that you do bring, you know, the technology in as necessary, but don't overwhelm yourself right. and the team. All right, well that's great. Well, maybe one of the shiny objects that I was going to get your thoughts on um, is this idea of augmented reality or virtual reality. We're seeing a lot of that, and you know maybe you could just talk a little bit about what is the difference between augmented versus virtual reality and is there really any use for this technology in a construction space or manufacturing space? Yeah, definitely. So virtual reality, if you're not familiar, you know, you see, you put the, the headset on, it's 100% immersive. Um, so Meaning it's the, everything you see there is generated by a computer. Yes, it's all virtual, everything you're seeing. Um, and and it's, it's, uh, it's a really cool thing. And, uh, you know, what, what you're seeing it used for most right now uh, is for personal, you know, like for fun, for games. You know, you see people play video games or do art, um, and you're slowly starting to see companies, construction companies, use VR for things like training uh, and actual diagnosing and troubleshooting their, their devices, which we have some information on that we'll discuss. And then you move into augmented reality, which is, you are still seeing everything, right? So you have a lens that you put on, um, but that lens inputs digital uh, items inside of what you're already seeing. So you're seeing the real world as the background, but it's just putting in pictures or any kind of shape, whatever it kind is. Kind of like uh, the old school you know, Terminator when he would be seeing people and it would, you'd see their face, Bingo. but it would bring in the data on top of it. Yes. Okay, so that stuff's reality now. And I actually saw you know, what you talked about with some of the virtual reality stuff, and you mentioned training. So a lot of our friends out there, especially construction manufacturing, safety is huge. And I've seen a lot of companies that are using virtual reality to put their workers in safety training hazardous situations so that they understand how to react, but it's virtual. So 
it's safe, but it allows them to, to be in the world where they can understand how to react in, in, you know, in a, in a volatile situation or high electrical current or toxic hazardous waste sort of thing. So that's a cool use for it. Definitely, definitely. And again, it, it will decrease uh, your risk of, of having safety incidents, you know, on the job. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's gaining a, a more practical use in the construction industry. Um, as in the past, you know, you see it used for you know, architecture firms. We have some architecture firms that we support that use VR headsets to show their clients these design plans. So it's more of a, before you saw it as more of a client facing technology and now yeah. you're seeing companies actually adopt it and use it for things like that. Hmm. So do you guys have any of your clients, have you, have you seen any examples of you know augmented or virtual reality that you might spark an interest or a thought in somebody and, and how they might leverage that? So we, other than again, some of those architecture clients that use it, um, we actually haven't seen any of our construction clients using that um, technology. And, and again, I think it's because it's a little bit newer. So you're seeing, you'll see the, the large corporations, companies uh, that can afford this kind of stuff because I think the price tag is pretty high on yeah. that stuff. Um, but eventually what I think you'll see is a little shift um, as it grows and gains more popularity and they'll make it more affordable and usable for the small to medium sized construction companies. Yeah, one thing we've seen in our world, you know, there's a obviously a gap of skilled tradesmen, people that are really skilled know how to repair, especially advanced technology equipment. And finding those to the numbers that you need are just difficult. So a lot of companies use um, representatives from the original manufacturer OEMs to call experts in. And right now, many of those, they hop on a plane, they fly there, everything's shut down until that expert shows up. Well, some companies are, are moving towards the augmented reality where your technician has augmented reality lenses and they're getting, so what they're seeing is being seen back remotely to an OEM headquarters and they have an expert there seeing it and then giving data to them over their augmented reality headsets, allowing them to troubleshoot virtually and remotely. So that's a way where you might be able to, you know, with a, uh, maybe a, a lower level of, of, of folks that you can find on, 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 on ground, you can use technology to actually reach back and get expertise when you need it. So that's, that's an example that we've seen. It's pretty interesting. So maybe we'll see more of that. You guys will have to go out and figure out how to fix that. And I <laughs> hope so. It. I hope so. We're <laughs> working on it. We're working on getting our own going. So yeah, we're getting our own little VR setup going for, uh, for some, to, to test it out, right? So it's pretty cool. That'll be so fun. I worked uh, before we started this company. I worked at Union Pacific Railroad, and they were starting to again a big company, and they had some R and D dollars, and they were beginning to use virtual reality, augmented reality to do bridge inspections. And, and this other technology we want to talk about, you know, is the use of drones. You know, we're seeing a lot of construction companies and maybe even some manufacturing companies. Now, when somebody says drone, a lot of people go, well, that's just a toy. But is there, is there a real use for drone technology that might help you know, uh, companies take advantage of technology? Yes, definitely. And I think it also is similar to VR in the sense that you're seeing a lot of enterprises use these drone technologies to uh, not only benefit their company and their projects, but also to benefit the clients because you've got these massive outdoor sites um, and the ability to monitor these by just you know popping a drone up in the air and then being able to scan and survey the whole the whole entire project site then you can send that data back again in real time back to the office um, back to that client uh, so they can get you know real-time updates on how the project's going sure. and your office workers can get real-time data and right now data is everything and if you can get it in real time you're you're a step ahead yeah i mean we're in the mindset today where i want it now i don't want hey we're going to go take pictures at the site and we'll post them up on the website at the end of the week that doesn't necessarily a consumer mentality today is instantaneous information is necessary so to be a competitive construction company or even manufacturing you know to be able to see even just site security 
things like that. So um, it's it's crucial to be able to to leverage some of these and not get caught in a tech trap where you just go out and get it because it's cool, but you know have a business case for it and then apply it when necessary. So I mentioned this this buzzword that we hear a lot: uh, security. You know, I talked about I was talking about in, in terms of physical security, but as we've seen the surge in cloud-based technologies, we've been talking about them, remote work, you know, especially over the last year, a lot has been happening. People are really comfortable with virtual meetings. We're working out of our homes. I mean, you got the kids and the puppies running around and you're doing business from your home PC. But is that introducing additional risk to companies that work in this cloud environment from a security perspective? Definitely. Um, you know, that was something that, that we personally dealt with a lot of at the very beginning of last year when they started sending everyone home is you you start to see um, not only are people needing to, you know, uh, get their employees set up from home, whether that be through a personal computer using a, a VPN client um, to make sure that it's a secure connection back to the office or, um, you know, they have we saw an increase in in email phishing. You know, the they email scams just went through the roof and they are extremely good at what they do. Uh, to what, say the for least. those that don't know, what is, I mean, it's not like, it's not like phishing like for fish, but it kind of is, right? Yes, so that's kind of where the term comes from. So it's actually spelled differently too. It's spelled with a PH. Um, but yeah, so you know, it's, it's phishing essentially. So what they'll do is they'll send an email that appears to be legitimate, whether it be from Microsoft or your boss. I mean, we have seen so it security, all. security, I mean, all kinds of things. I get them myself. Yes, and you know, just being able to spot that. Um, so what we do to kind of be proactive about that is we offer some email phishing training, which is kind of the first line of defense that you can do as a company is Train your employees how to spot things like that. Um, and it's, you know, it really does work. It's really beneficial. But yeah, that increase in, in phishing scams was definitely something that we saw and, and we dealt with a lot of, and we still deal with it. And it's going to be on the rise. And not only, you know, a lot of people are going to what's called FOIP, you know, a term that I didn't, wasn't familiar with until a few years ago, but essentially it's using your your telephony or your telephones all over internet, voice yep. over internet protocol. And these things also are getting attacked. We're finding we're getting a lot of, you know, unsolicited people that are coming into that because it's on the network. Yep. So the, the the point of all this is the more that we leverage cloud technology, the, the more that you have to be cognizant and, and put some security things in place, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, everything these days has an IP you know, an, an IP address, internet protocol. Um, essentially what that is, is just a, it's a unique identifier for the devices on your internal network. Um, and since everything is moving to that, you're gonna only see, you know, those security risks increase. So, you know, the ways you can kind of combat that is with training like that, like we talked about, um, multi-factor authentication, MFA, which is something I'm, I'm sure you've, you've heard of. Um, you guys use it, so you're familiar, I know. Um, and then just, you know, again, keeping security in mind when you talk about that tech trap, you have to keep security in mind. That's one of those pieces of that that I think maybe get pushed to the side yeah. when you're discussing that technology. Yeah. But it's important to, to say, okay, how are we going to make sure that this is secure when we make this move? Yeah, it's really crucial. It's kind of like, well, training kind of tends to go out of... You know, it's one of the first things you, you cut in the budget, and it's crucial. It's just like security. And I think one thing you mentioned, Austin, is crucial. We talk about cloud technology and the Internet of Things and everything connected. And you said every device has an IP address. And a lot of people, your home out there, I mean, you can control your garage, your life with your phone. You can set your alarm. You know, you, your car is all connected. Every one of those things that you that, that's very easy and, and you know, beneficial to be able to get through your smartphone, each one of those is an endpoint, right? That has a distinct address that that is could be exposed externally. Yes, it's like a leak, yes. a water leak in the upstairs bathroom. Oh yeah, if you don't do something about it, you could have some problems. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely have some problems. So so even though all this stuff is cool. 
and you need it and you know but but just recognize that there are some risks associated with it yeah definitely it should be on the forefront you know when you're when you're discussing this technology for sure so uh, what do you what have you seen in the phishing and email what have you seen as a funniest you know it's funny until it happens to you what is the, one of the funniest things and I'll share an example of one of our guys here and, may, and I'll let you think for a minute so this has happened a couple of times but one of our one of our employees here gets an email while they're out I don't know how they know while they're out but they're out of the office they get an email over their device that says from our CEO or from me hey uh, Austin while you're out, I need you to pick up some gift cards <laughs> from such and such place and just get the numbers off the back of them and send them to me. Sign Brett or sign Tim. And we had a guy, had a handful of them going up to the counter. He was about to pay for them and he called back just to check to make sure that the nominations were correct. <laughs> and he was that close because it came from one of us. It looked legit. Yeah. So it's so funny until you know uh, Joe Smuckatelli overseas has got two thousand dollars worth of gift cards yeah so uh, funny story about that and Abby our business development business development representative is gonna kill me um, but when she first started a few months back um, we actually got hit with that same thing um, and poor Abby, uh, she went to Best Buy. She got this email, right? It's signed, signed Monty. Um, and she went there and, and she got the cards. Oh, she works she, for an IT company. All so right, Abby. She, All right. she got you stay it. in business development. And we still, we still give her crap today. Um, <laughs> you know, Monty was like, oh, man, you know, it happens. Did she give the, the codes? Yep. So we got it. We got it all. So luckily, we st we stopped her before it got too far. But yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that they somehow find out how to make it look legit. Like the email. If I wouldn't have looked at who sent the email, like in the email tag, because I know how to recognize that stuff, I would have looked that email and said, "Yeah, Auntie sent that. It looked exactly like what he would have yeah. sent." Yeah, it, it was incredible. Literally, right before I came in, this I was in a meeting. Before I came in here, my phone rang. And I'm like, hmm, I don't recognize that. It was uh, some insurance company. So I answer it, and there's uh, a representative on the other end saying, hey, you've got a problem with your payment on this insurance policy, workers' comp insurance policy, blah, 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 blah. We need you to immediately, uh, you know, give us the information necessary to make sure this payment or your insurance is going to lapse. And I hung up. Because I knew that's not how things go, but I mean it is ubiquitous. It's yeah. out there all the time, and it's all around us. So that's interesting. And Abby, we won't hold that against you. I want to use that? that that's going to help somebody. Yes, so. definitely. <laughs> all right. So maybe uh, kind of to bring it back to things that may be impacting folks out there. We 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 talked a podcast you know, recently. We talked about our twenty twenty one emerging trends, and we introduced this. Fourth Industrial Revolution concept, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, the Internet of Things. What are you seeing? Can you shed any light on what your team is seeing? Are these actually being used in the workplace? Are we just kind of talking about futuristic things, or what could you what could you talk about with respect to that? Yeah. So the you know the AI, the machine learning is definitely being used. Um, you know when you talk about data. You know, everybody talks, you know, what is data? You know, before data was what you paid for on your cell phone plan. You know, this is this is the this is my data for the month. Right. Data now is so different. They take this information from all aspects of your business that all of these applications uh, that your company is using. They put this information together to help you as a company kind of guide your processes and refine them. Uh, to Im to improve them, save money, save time, increase safety, whatever it may be. Um, so when you talk about AI and machine learning, we discussed the article about um, it was Caterpillar, their marine division. So they're saving four hundred thousand dollars per ship per year um, after machine learning analyzed data <clears throat> determined how often the holes should be cleaned. So these are. They were using ships to ship stuff overseas, and they 
because they did some kind of uh, data gathering and assessment, they were able to $400,000 for every time they ship something. That's a big chunk of change. It is. It makes a huge difference, especially because, you know, before it was just, this is when we clean it no matter what, you know, and, and then once they got these connected devices that started to monitor these, their, you know, their ships more close, then they were able to go, okay, well, we don't have to clean every single one of these every time. It's not ready for maintenance. We're not, so why waste the time and the money yeah. and then do it when they tell us, you know, when, when it tells us that it's ready. Yeah. That's that predictive maintenance that we talked about. And it's, it's really huge. And now, you know, just bringing it back to what we do, you know, and, and at skill work is, you know, we, we're interested in skilled craftsmen that need to go there. So as we get more technology out there, the people that you need to be able to monitor, to implement, to even to repair this equipment, the tech, their, their skill set is going to be increasing. So as you as a company embrace this technology, you can't leave your people behind. You have to provide them the training or bring people in with those skills is if you put a bunch of new technology in place and say, look at this awesome technology and nobody knows how to make it work or repair it, you know, and I can't get a hold of Austin at 2 a.m. in the morning when I'm when my line goes down, then it's it's kind of important. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, the training is huge. Right. Um, and luckily, a lot of the companies that that sell this technology with that you know package, they'll also sell you some training. Right. But a lot of the times it's only to a set amount of people, upper management, you know, whoever, project managers. Um, and, you know, to kind of lean on your IT department to also understand that technology to help train the rest of your end users is huge. Because yeah. again, you don't just want, you don't want to overwhelm people. You don't want to just shove this technology at them at a million miles an hour because then you're just going to create a frustrated worker. Yeah, and uh, and you know even bringing this technology down to the manufacturing floor or at the construction site, so it's it's it goes beyond information technology to this is a practical leveraging of technology that your traditional maintenance employees used to work on when it was a mechanical device. Now it's a fusion of technology and mechanical and. The advanced skills that you need is going to be a continuing gap. And that's kind of one of the things we won't continue to emphasize that we at SkillWork can help partner with you, just like you guys partner with us to make sure we get you the guys necessary to be able to do that and help you um, take advantage of all this stuff. So, man, I, I, I just wondered, do you have anything else you want to throw in before we wrap up here and we, we touch on all the things? Um, Technology is cool, right? The guys that you 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 made fun of in school, they're now we're all working for them. The revenge of the nerds. <laughs> the yeah, revenge, the of, the revenge nerds. of the nerds. <laughs> yeah. So Austin's not a nerd. He's a great guy. And uh, anything you want to talk about with your company and Aegis and kind of what you're doing? I know you're you're here where we are locally located. Our headquarters is in Omaha, Nebraska, and you, you, a lot of your clients are here locally. But anything you want to you want to pitch for Aegis? Yeah. You know, I think we kind of went through. Uh, most of it, you know, uh, I mean, anybody that's that's struggling with technology, obviously, if you need help, yeah, if, feel free to reach out. Give us a call, you know. Um, How do they get a hold of you? Is it like Aegis? What's your website? So it's just aegistech.com. Um, E-G-I-S. E-G-I-S. Yeah, E-G-I-S. Not, not like the, it is, it comes from the, the Greek god, right? A-E. A-E-G-I-S. Yeah. But... Aegis. But Monty, um, the founder, he couldn't spell very well. So yes, he so he, and we still help him today. We still help him with those spelling mistakes. So, um, so yeah, I mean, don't, don't be afraid of technology um, because, again, there are people out there who can help you, and, and it's only going to benefit you and your company in yeah. the long run. Right. Well, that's great. Thanks, Austin, for joining us today. Um, we appreciate you guys, as always, for joining us here at the Skill Work Forum. You know, just remind you of our core values and who we are as a company. Three things that we always say. We honor God in everything we do. That means, you know, treat people with integrity and respect, dignity, do the right things. Uh, speaking of respect, respect to skilled workers, skilled craftsmen, that's our second core value. And the third thing, and maybe you can take this on board today, we measure success as a company in the amount of people and the number of people we can positively impact. So do something good for somebody today. Uh, it'll make a difference in your world and our world. So until next time, thanks for joining us.